Blockchain. If you have been trying to keep up with cryptocurrency terminology, I'm sure you must have heard of blockchain a lot. Nowadays, people talk about blockchain, as if, the blockchain technology, is the solution for all the problems of this world. But what are blockchains? Blockchain can be looked upon as something similar to a database, but that which uses linked list format for storing data, unlike a relational database, which uses tables and rows, for storing data. Also, blockchains are decentralized, which means, the data is distributed in a peer-to-peer -peer network, and exists in all the computers of the blockchain network, thereby preventing dependence on a centralized server, for storage and security. In simple terms, you have a bunch of blocks that have pieces of information on them, and they are linked to each other making it look like a chain of blocks. And that, is blockchain. Really? That's it then. We are done. Just kidding. Of course, what we said is true, but that doesn't explain why it has assumed so much of importance. Let's dive into the details now. Blockchains are the center of the crypto world. The blockchain technology started as the engine that powered Bitcoin, but it has evolved to serve many functions. If the crypto ecosystem is assumed to be the solar system, then blockchain is the sun, and all the underlying applications built upon the blockchain technology, are the planets around it. Each block of a blockchain contains three main pieces of information. 1. Data. 2. A unique 64 hexadecimal containing numbers and alphabets called hash. The hash is generated based on the data that is stored in the block through an encryption algorithm. 3. Another 64 hexadecimal number, which is the hash of the previous block. If the data in the block changes, then the hash changes, making the block invalid in the link. To prevent this, the data in the block can never be changed, once it's added to the blockchain. Instead, whenever the data needs to be changed, a new block gets created, and is added to the end of the blockchain. Blocks in a blockchain can be used to store any type of data, though it all started with storing and tracking financial transaction with bitcoins. Now, the data in a blockchain can be related to land ownership, medical records, supply chain monitoring, NFT marketplaces, and so on. I can hear you say, data is easy to understand. Now, what is a hash? Well hash is an output of a cryptographic function when you supply some input. The hash is a unique 64 character hexadecimal value, irrespective of the size of the input. What? You lost me there. Can't you explain it in simple language? I hear you. I'll give some examples, and that should make it clear. Let's assume there is a machine that generates the hash. Let's give a simple English word, apple, as the input. Take a look at the output, which is the hash value for the input, a text apple. I know what you are thinking. What the heck is that? Well, as I said before, hash is a unique 64 character hexadecimal value, when you use most cryptographic algorithms. We have shown a mechanical process using a machine that creates the hash for your easier understanding. However, the cryptographic function is a complex software, I mean, an extremely complex software, that's hard for me to explain here, in an easily understandable way. Unless you are a crazy computer nerd, it's impossible for you to follow the algorithm. Did I say the cryptographic function, known as hashing, is a ridiculously complex mathematical function. I thought I did. Just checking. The reason they made it so hard is because they don't want any hacker to be able to guess or hack the hash code. Now, let's try a different input. I'll send an entire book's contents to the hacking machine and see what the hash code looks like. You must be wondering why I'm getting a 64 character hexadecimal value again, even though I gave the entire story as the input. That's how it works with hashing. 
It doesn't matter what length the input is. The hash value will always be a 64 character. Irrespective of the input being just a single word or a full book, the hash is always a 64 character hexadecimal value. This hash value is unique and will be the same, for the same input, irrespective of how many times you try it. The hashing is also a one-way encryption. In other words, you can get a hash, given an input, but you can never decrypt it, back to its original value. It's like you can make an omelette from an egg, but not an egg from an omelette. Does it make sense? The hash value that you have computed, then becomes the previous hash for the next block in the chain, thereby letting the sequence or the order be known. Anyway, now we understand blockchain, block, and hash, our next job is to tell you how this becomes the center of the crypto world. First of all, the entire blockchain acts as a ledger as you have, in accounting ledger. There will be multiple copies of the ledger in many computers, and thereby, the blockchain becomes a distributed ledger. These computers which have the blockchain copies will form a peer-to-peer -peer network, and thereby becomes a decentralized network. In other words, the blockchain doesn't reside in one or more centralized servers of some company, like Amazon, or a bank, like Bank of America, but it resides on very many decentralized machines. And I know what's your next question. Where are these decentralized computers located? It can be present anywhere in the world. Anyone who has a computer and the right skills can enter into the blockchain community, and become part of the record keeping, as well as auditing, of the transactions in a blockchain. Well, what is the incentive for someone to add themselves, to the blockchain network? The reward is not always proportional to the amount of work they need to do. Sometimes, they are paid a fee, and some other times, the data mining professionals work on proof of work, apart from coming up with the next block and its hash, may get rewarded with cryptocurrencies. We'll cover all these details when we talk about blockchain mining in a separate video. I can see, you are getting restless. I'm sure you are still not satisfied how this blockchain will solve practical problems. For you to understand that, I need to give you a real-life example, using a cryptocurrency, like a bitcoin. Let's say you have 10 bitcoins. You decide to buy an expensive diamond ring for your girlfriend using one bitcoin. Now, the diamond retailer gets your bitcoin and trades you a diamond. This is a transaction using one bitcoin. Now, let's see what happens when this transaction is completed. Remember, you have 10 bitcoins, and that had a path before it reached you. Maybe you went to the bitcoin exchange, and purchased it, or you mined for the bitcoins. Either way, the bitcoin has undergone one or more transactions before it reached your hands. Let's assume that for each transaction, a new block is added. The block is actually of a size of 1 megabyte or so, and as many transactions that can fit 1 megabyte will be part of a block. For now, let's stick to the idea that one block has one transaction, for easier understanding. Let's say the bitcoin you just used to buy a diamond ring has already undergone 5 transactions. Each transaction will be one block in the blockchain. Before the transaction gets added to a block, validations will be made, to see if you are the real owner of the Bitcoin, and if you have enough of it, to buy the diamond ring, by looking at the previous transactions. That's the biggest advantage, of using a blockchain. Now, you made the sixth transaction, resulting in the sixth block of the blockchain. The process of creating a block is a long story, and I can cover that in a different video. For now, let's say when you made the transaction, the block was created and added to the blockchain. Well, when I say it got added to the blockchain, I mean, it's added to all the computers that are part of the blockchain network, involved in record keeping and monitoring the transactions. It's permanent, and a copy of this transaction exists in all the computers. It cannot be altered or removed. The data that's maintained in the transaction will have at a minimum, 
the buyer and seller details, timestamp, and the amount, meaning the number of bitcoins used for the transaction. Okay, you finally understand how the blockchain works. Now, you wonder what are the advantages of a blockchain. It has some significant advantages, compared to the centralized record keeping, by the servers of your bank or the online store. First, the failure of a single machine or server does not lead to the loss of the transaction details. The decentralization of data, on a peer-to-peer -peer network, ensures that there is no dependence on centralized corporate network. Second, it's very secure because the data is encrypted by a complex algorithm. Third, the integrity of the data is preserved because the data can't be changed easily. Finally, the transparency and ease of audit of the transactions. Blockchain technology is now being introduced in more places, than what it originally started, managing Bitcoin transactions. It can be used in medical record keeping, land sale records, and even collection of taxes. Also, there can be private blockchains too, where the network is not open to the public, but maintained within a certain group. For many, blockchain is the way of the future. There are already a lot of blockchains apart from Bitcoin, like Ethereum 2, Definity, Polkadot, etc. But, as any new technology, blockchain has its own challenges to overcome. The main challenges are the implementation and integration costs, privacy issues, as well as the power consumption, to maintain the copies of the same data in multiple computers in a network. The future of this technology still looks very promising though. We'll wait and see. Thanks for watching.